Created by Shiv revealed the real women, starring R. Madhavan, K. K. Menon, Babil Khan and Divyendu Sharma in the lead roles, is finally released on Netflix. As the based on real events YRF miniseries releases on the streaming platform, we thought this would be the perfect time to give you an overview, talk about the ending and discuss some hidden details of the series so that you can have the best viewing experience. A spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the show. So if you haven't been able to catch up with the series yet, maybe you should pause the video and get back to watching it on Netflix. But if you are done watching it already, kindly follow us through this video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. It helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on. The series is about the infamous Bhopal disaster of 1984 a gas leak and chemical accident that occurred at the Union Carbide India Limited or UCIL pesticide plant in Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh, India on the night of 2nd and 3rd December 1984. Considered the world's worst industrial disaster, more than 5 lakh people who live in small villages around the plant were exposed to methyl isocyanide or MIC, a highly toxic gas. Estimates vary on the number of deaths, with the official death toll being 2,259. In 2008, the Madhya Pradesh government paid compensation to 3,787 gas victims and their families to 5,74,366 victims. A 2006 government statement said that the leak injured 5,58,125 people, including 38,478 with partial temporary injuries and about 3,900 with serious and permanently disabling injuries. Other estimates that 8,000 people died within two weeks and since then more than 8,000 have died from gas-related illness. Anyway, the series is about the heroes who saved countless lives by risking their own lives and starts with the journalist Kumawad trying his best to make sense of the events and the outcomes that followed after the disaster. He is dumbstruck to find that the main culprit is being extradited from India despite being responsible for the unfortunate event. The show uses various footage from the real events and shows us the scene where Warren Anderson, the CEO of UCC, flees India with federal intervention. The series then cuts back to the day of the disaster and starts with Iftika Siddiqui, the SM of Bhopal station, who wakes up after having a nightmare, probably from his past, when he was unable to save an innocent kid from dying in an accident. He probably blames himself for the accident and rushes to his workplace. He is also going through a rough patch in his family. And then the series takes us to the ground zero where we can see the factory workers going gaga over a perpetrated disaster signal but the chief engineer Kamruddin destroys the hoax completely. Kumawat is then seen with the previous driver of the factory Imad Riaz who decides to tell him the truth about the safety measures of the factory and warns him that the entire town is sitting on a ticking bomb which can go off any time. One of his friends died in one such accident so he decided to leave the job and adopt his family as his own. Additionally, he is friends with Kamruddin and together they plan to expose the wrongdoings of the company. Kamruddin fears that the MIC tank which is not supposed to have contact with water is in bad shape and the safety measures are completely outdated. He wants his superior but he refuses to do anything as the company is running at a loss. After having concrete evidence, Kamruddin decides to expose everything to Kumawat. In the meantime, we learn that Iftikhar is an honest man and wants everything to be perfect in his workplace. This is why he is equally respected and feared among his co-workers. After bidding Kumawat farewell, Imad comes for an interview in front of Iftikhar and passes one tough test so the SM hires him as an assistant loco pilot. Then enters a colorful character, the infamous Express Bandit who previously attacked an Emily and the police are on the lookout. After failing to get his fail on time, he attacks a railway officer and decides to loot the vault of Bhopal station. He comes to the station and meets the SM as a police officer but his actual plan is to loot the station when the SM will be engaged in some other affairs. The cleaning worker Asan and his newly joined subordinate were not properly trained so they did not pay full attention to their work and the unthinkable happened when the water started leaking into the tank. As Kamruddin was leaving he noticed a leak and decided to escort everyone out. He tried to stop the disaster but ended up dead when the gas burst out of the tank. The SM has no idea what is happening as the communications are down for maintenance purposes. The Gorakhpur bound train is about to reach Bhopal Junction but as the comms are down there seems to be no way to stop the train on time. 
The Idasi Junction station master is worried about a surprise inspection from a stern railway officer called Rati Pandey, so much so that he voluntarily ignores the Bhopal Junction's offline steed. Imad finds his superior at the car shed being affected by the gas, he quickly recognizes the smell of the MIC and in order to help him, he reaches Bhopal Junction. If the car finds himself in another dire situation and he seems helpless once again as he witnesses people dying in front of him. All hell breaks loose as countless people try to find shelter in the railway office, so he and the express bandit guide them to the waiting room. They lock themselves in when Imad arrives and informs them how to protect themselves from the gas. Vijaya, who came to get some emergency money for her daughter's wedding from Iftikhar, also collapses after being exposed to the gas for a long time. And unbeknownst to her, her daughter's marriage is also disrupted by the outbreak. Madsen from the factory decides to shut themselves in from all the questions until he gets orders from his Arabs, but Kumawat is on his way to expose them. With Imad's help, Iftikhar learns about how to protect oneself from the deadly gas and also gets to know that the block line is still functioning, so he calls up the station master to inform their present condition. But as his voice is inaudible, they are unable to deduce the situation. Then suddenly, Rati Pandey reveals himself from his disguise and takes command of the Itarsi Junction. When he learns about the gas leak from Bhopal's DM, he issues orders to stop the Gorakhpur Express from reaching Bhopal. But he failed as the guard of the train was engaged in saving two sick women from being persecuted by a hateful mob. This is a nod to the 1984 anti-Sikh riots, also known as the 1984 Sikh Massacre. This incident was a series of programs organized against the Sikh community in India following the assassination of Indira Gandhi by her Sikh bodyguards. According to government estimates, around 2,800 Sikhs were killed in Delhi and 3,350 across the country, while other sources put the death toll at around 8,000 to 17,000. A flashback then gives us a glimpse at the destructive power of the poisonous gas. In 1970, at Central Institute of Toxicology Research in New York, a toxicologist called Alex Brown experimented on the effects of the gas and found that it was extremely dangerous. But his superior stopped him from exposing everything to the public as UCC funded and owned the results. In the present time, Rati Pandey calls his superior Rajeshwari Changle, the DG of the Railway Ministry, and the GM informs her about the current state of the matter. He pleads with her to send aid to Bhopal and ask his peer to gather medical help. Additionally, he orders his GM special car to be ready at his disposal. Meanwhile, inside the Gorakhpur Express, as the rioters enter the guard's cabin, the guard is forced to fight them. The rioters, however, found out that the girl with the sick mother is actually her son in disguise and she was running away with him in order to protect him. The guard manages to beat them up for the time being and pulls the chain. He then shifts the sick family to the pilot car and he tries to divert them with some explosives at his disposal. By the time he boards the train, he gets severely injured, but he manages to save the family and get rid of the rioters. Imad and Eftika leave the station in order to build a train that could help them escape. But the express bandit decides to take this opportunity to get to the vault. However, Prasad comes in time and tries to stop him. Meanwhile, after learning from Rajeshwari that the railway minister had decided not to intervene, Rati decided to take matters into his own hands and drive his GM special to Bhopal to help the people stuck there. Kumawat found Imad's mother dead but manages to find Kamruddin's wife and takes her to the hospital. Alex Brown was faithful in India on the day of the unfortunate event, so he decided to stretch his helping hand with an antidote containing sodium thiosulfate to the ministry, but they refused to entertain him. It was Rajeshwari who acknowledged his efforts and provided him with a special flight that would help him take the medicines to the affected area. Imad and Iftika reach Bhopal Junction with a made-up rescue train, but before they can move out, the engine gives up and panic breaks out amongst the suffocating survivors. Though the people stuck in the station acted irrationally, a bunch of athletes displayed their bravery by saving Vijay's ailing daughter. With the two trains approaching Bhopal Junction at the same time, the situation is getting out of hand. Meanwhile, a shady man called Miza approaches Rajeshwari and tries to bribe her so that she doesn't send help, but she rejects his offer. It seems Mirza was secretly working for the UCC. Meanwhile, Madsen receives a call from Kumawad who got his hands on the secret files and threatens him to confess about the mismanagement, otherwise he will go public. But it turns out that the files were fabricated as well and it will only help the company to get a clean sheet. When the Express Bandit and Prasad try to convince the SM to leave his responsibility and run away with them, he tells them about the incident that is causing his nightmares. 
He refuses to leave these innocent people behind as his conscience will haunt him even more in his dreams so they decide to stick together to save as many people as possible. After hearing the sound of the approaching Gorakhpur Express, they go their separate ways to stop the train in time in order to prevent an accident. Prasad goes to set up explosives but he dies in the process. The GM special is stopped by the orders of the ministry at the Miss Road station and Rajeshwari is unable to convince the minister to let the train go. The Gorakhpur Express is stopped in time but a full-blown panic breaks out when the passengers breathe in the toxic air. If the car tries to save them all but a huge number of locals board the train to save themselves. Imad goes out to signal the train to leave but he asked Iftikar to keep the family of his deceased friend safe for the time being. The train is ready to leave but the express bandit could not leave with it on time because his conscience finally kicked in and he is forced to stay behind. As the train is leaving, the GM special approaches the station and Imad is able to divert a collision in time but as a result of being exposed to the toxic air for a long time, he loses his life. Iftikhar finds the daughter of Imad's friend but as she is suffering from the gas, he gives her CPR and revives her. He collapses down in the process but before he gets unconscious, the relief train arrives. The express bandit takes the keys from his pocket but when he learns that the officials are blaming the SM for the loot, he decides to leave it in its rightful place. As the relief work is under process, the ministry decides to make Rati the scapegoat but Rajeshwari decides to give her neck instead in order to safeguard the brave hearts who genuinely help the people in need. Numerous dead bodies are taken into graveyards and cremation grounds and as if the car's body could not be identified, he is taken to be cremated. But surprisingly, he wakes up and seems disturbed by the ritual. But when he is reunited with his son, he finally comes down learning that everything is safe now. The heroes who helped protect countless lives did not receive any medals nor did the culprits receive any punishments for their crimes. The Bhopal station only received a memorial with the names of the brave hearts who lost their lives protecting countless innocent people. If the guard is reunited with the express bandit one year later in his office and it seems now he is aware of his true identity. But learning that the cunning man has changed now, he decides to let him go. And the express bandit finally reveals his true name which is Balwan Yadav. Kumawat found out that the state of the country had not changed when he revisited Kamruddin's wife after a long time. The unfortunate incident not only claimed the life of her husband but crippled her child. The ending shows us the real inspirations of the various characters in the series but we will discuss them in detail in a different video. Though the state of the country has not changed significantly since then we can be hopeful that as long as good people like the Brevehards from the series are there to protect innocent lives and humanity, there is a high chance that we can bounce back from any unfortunate situation. Be it arguably the world's worst industrial disaster or the greatest virus outbreak of recent times, these people will always come forward when the innocents are in need. The series is mostly good looking with its costumes, sets, camera work and sound design for tense moments, everything is competent. But when the VFX, CGI and real footage collide, it looks ridiculous. The acting of K.K. Menon and Sunny Hindoja is definitely the best among the lot but Babil Khan, Divyendu Sharma and R. Madhavan didn't really impress us. The show also features Juhi Chawla Mehta, Mandira Bidi, Divyendu Bhattacharya and Raghubi Yadav but their characters are not memorable. In the second and the third episodes, the writing seems to falter and go nowhere. The show picks up its pace in the final episode but that doesn't quite make up for the glaring flaws in the writing. The series had great potential but failed to fully deliver. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching The Real Women on Netflix. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you at the next one and for the timing we are signing off. Achha chalta hu, sach likhta hu na miya, wo sunna nahi kisi ko and I'll be back.